Akara seems to be on a roll just now with new product after new product coming out. And today they are finally getting stuck into the smart home heating scene with their new Thermostat E1, a fully wireless solution to individual zone and room controlled heating that can be set up in just a matter of minutes and has the potential to save you money on your ever skyrocketing energy bills. Let's have a look and see if they are worth the investment. Thank you to Lockit for sponsoring this video. Lockit is home insurance that rewards you for protecting your home with smart tech by giving you discounts off your premium. If you don't know the amazing work Lockit is doing, get to know. And if you're unsure whether to switch them, you can still sign up with their free newsletter for their expert advice and smart tech trends. And bonus if you're needing some smart home inspiration. Speaking of signing up, they have their insiders program, which is pretty much a study aiming to add to the research into the protective benefits of smart home technology. So just think, you could be helping thousands of people by sharing your opinion and protecting your home with the free smart tech they send you. And even better, you get rewarded for taking part with free smart home tech, as well as other member benefits, including a completion bonus for staying the study. Check out Lockit with the link in the video description. Full transparency as always, Akara did provide me with the Thermostat E1 for me to check out. So the Akara Radiator Thermostat E1 is a wireless thermostatic radiator valve designed to replace your regular non-smart TRV, giving you a simple and easy way to have individual room or zone controlled heating in your smart home very similar to the Shelly TRV that we took a look at a few months ago. However, unlike the Shelly TRVs and like the rest of Akara's lineup, the Akara TRVs are Zigbee 3.0 rather than Wi-Fi, and the Akara Thermostat E1 comes in at 54.99 in the UK or 59 euros. The Akara TRV is cylindrical in design with a matte white finish with a connector for your radiator on one end and then on the other end is a backlit display showing target temperature as well as other useful information. If you rotate the ring around the display, you can change the target temperature easily with a nice satisfying click. You can also push this center ring in which acts as a button for changing the modes from manual to auto, calibrating the valve as well as pairing to the network. If you grab the base and twist, it will remove the cap where underneath you will find two AA batteries. I'll admit I was actually expecting this to be rechargeable batteries like the Curtain Driver E1, but that's not the case and I do think this is where the Shelly does have a slight advantage over the Akara because it does have rechargeable batteries and a USB Type-C port. But the Shelly is overall a little bit bigger as opposed to the Akara, so I guess that is a trade-off. They do say that the battery life is rated for up to one year though on the Akara, so that is quite nice. Attaching it to your radiator is simple. Simply choose one of the three included adapters in the box that fits your radiator best, attach that to the radiator, and then screw the TRV onto the adapter and you are pretty much done. Once done, you can press and hold the ring three times to calibrate the valve, at which point you are ready to go and connect it to your smart home platform. Out of the box, it supports most major smart home platforms, including Amazon, Google Home, and HomeKit using one of the Akara hubs, as well as Home Assistant through Zigbee to MQTT or ZHA, as well as I'm sure other open source platforms too. SmartThings will probably work too, but I'm guessing that will require a custom driver to make that work first. Let's first take a look at what you get with the Akara app to see what it looks like under ideal conditions. And then we will take a look at Home Assistant and HomeKit. So to pair with the Akara ecosystem, you simply select the Thermostat E1 from the list of devices and then press and hold the center ring on the TRV for 10 seconds until the network indicator light flashes and it will connect right up. Then inside of the Akara app, you will see that you can control the target temperature of the thermostat, as well as view the current temperature of the room from its internal temperature sensor, which the H1 has built in. 
Although Akara obviously recognises that the built-in temperature sensor has the potential to be influenced by the radiator it's connected to, so they do provide you with the ability to link it to an external temperature sensor that you may have in the room, which is pretty cool so that you can get more accurate readings. The way it works is essentially that when the temperature is low in the room, the little motorised valve will open up inside, which in turn allows the radiator to come on and start heating the room. And then when it's up to temperature and heating is no longer required, the valve will then close and the radiator will turn off. You can also change the mode to have it automatically regulate the valve position depending on the temperature, or there is also a frost protection mode, which is nice to have if you're going on holiday or something and you just want to keep the pipes from freezing when it gets really cold, or maybe you have a guest house or something that these would be super handy for. The Akara app also allows you to create heating schedules which are surprisingly detailed, so you can set a schedule for one, any or all days of the week, including a start and an end time. And you can also have different periods of different temperatures within that day. So for example, during the first section of the day, you can have it be 18 degrees, and then later on in the day, have the temperature rise up to 21 degrees, and then later again, rise up to 23 degrees. I really like this and it works good. I'd like it if I could have more than one schedule, so like a weekday schedule and then a weekend schedule or something like that, which you can't currently do. But yeah, the rest of it is really good. If you head into the settings as well, you can configure the frost protection temperature as well as anomaly detection. And you can even hook this up to a contact sensor to automatically stop heating if a window is left open to save you wasting heat, which is a nice addition too. And if you head into automations, you can create automations with the E1, including changing the temperature, turning the heating on or off, enabling schedules and all of those good features. And I noticed that there is also now a beta feature for geolocation, which now allows you to create automations based on if you are home or not. This would allow you to automatically turn off the heating when you leave for the day or turn it back on when you arrive home or something like that. And you can use that geolocation for other devices too, of course. It's really good to see that geolocation finally included in the Akara app. You can, of course, connect this to HomeKit if you're using an Akara hub. And that is good for connecting it to Home Assistant if you want to connect it directly. Or you can just use it standalone if you prefer HomeKit. So when you connect it to HomeKit, you will get access to the thermostat controls, as well as be able to view the current temperature in the room as well as see the battery status. Let's now investigate the Home Assistant side of things. Now, of course, you can use the HomeKit integration to connect to the Akara Hub into Home Assistant directly, which I just mentioned, which will get you fast and local control to all of your Akara devices, including the Thermostat E1. The controls exposed inside of Home Assistant when using HomeKit are the climate control entity along with the target temperature and current status, along with the battery indicator of the valve and the current temperature of the room. If you want to connect the E1 directly to Home Assistant using your own Zigbee coordinator, then you can of course do that with ZHA or Zigbee to MQTT, and both work, although don't quite have all of their functionality available currently. Zigbee to MQTT has the most options available with the climate entity, the current temperature, allowing you to change the mode, child lock, window detection, and frost protection settings, with the only real thing I can see missing being the battery indicator, which doesn't seem to show up just yet. But other than that, it's pretty good and everything is present for the most part when using Zigbee to MQTT. ZHA also works but gives you quite a bit less control, at least at the moment. The main climate control entity works and shows you the target and current temperature and you can control the valve position no problem, but the additional things like the modes, frost protection and battery level aren't currently showing up just yet. I suspect this will get added soon and I will try and submit a custom quirk of my own to ZHA to get some of the things working, but right now it's not currently here. But the main climate entity does work great if that's all you care about is controlling the target temperature and have it auto-regulate itself. So the Akara thermostat is an incredibly easy way to have individual zone-controlled heating in your smart home in literally a matter of minutes, much like the Shelly TRV is, and those are very similar products barring a few key differences. Firstly, the Shelly is Wi-Fi based, 
where the Akara is using Zigbee 3.0. Which one is best for your situation, I will leave up to you. And if you are interested in the differences and the pros and cons of each, I will leave a link to a playlist up here, which does a much deeper dive into the differences between Zigbee and Wi-Fi. The other difference is granularity. The Shelly has the ability to not only have it auto-regulate itself based on the room temperature, but if you want to, you can actually change the position of the valve manually if you want to have more granular control over things, where the Akara does not have that option. The Shelly also has a slight advantage on battery life too, with its rechargeable batteries, which I do like, but the Akara is £10 cheaper than the Shelly, which if you're buying quite a few of these for a different amount of rooms, that could certainly add up in a price difference. The Akara Radiator Thermostat E1 is certainly an excellent device, and I do appreciate the usual Akara quality and feature set, and if you are interested in picking something like this up, you won't be disappointed with either one. Let me know in the comments what you think of the brand new Akara Thermostat E1. I'd be interested to hear what you think of it down below. Was there any additional features that you think are missing or that you wanted to see? Let me know. Anyways, that's about going to do it for this video. I hope you did in fact enjoy it. If you did, please make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed if you aren't already. We're getting close and I will see you in the next video.